Hey everyone, just a quick personal freebie to the group, elementary, but for some of you, I want you to have a heads up on the potential accentuation of artifacting that you will find in texture and clarity and what the difference between texture, clarity, and dehaze are in Adobe Lightroom and Camera Raw. This is a very old image. I've been wanting to rework it one of these days. And as you can tell here, I haven't yet, but I will. The bottom line is that Clarity came out first and there's been different iterations of it over the years. And it's been mostly an attempt to add middle tone contrast and to some degree, middle frequency boost to the image. Of course, we all know what tone is, everything from white to black and in between. Frequencies, though, are maybe a little bit more mysterious. It just really means how fine is the detail in your image. Of course, white puffy clouds are very low frequency. It has to do with transitions of tone. So this is low frequency. The blue back here is almost no frequency. It's very smooth. Stuff in the very far distance is very low frequency. But as you start getting into these areas, you have a lot of mid frequencies and also a lot of high frequency. That's just like sandstone, millions of little, little, little things. So clarity came out, caused a lot of halo problems and it had been known for many years for Photoshop guru types that if you added contrast to an image in Photoshop, but then you used the layer style blending options, blend if mostly, of course, people could make layer masks back then too, luminosity masks or what have you. But if you faded it off of the shadows and highlights, you would get a contrast, but in the grayish areas of your image, sort of dehazing or clarifying an image. And as one top Photoshop teacher once said, middle tone contrast is a secret weapon and it nearly always improves an image and more often than not, dramatically. So back then to know that was a secret weapon. Get that nice depth and dimension. Well, they wrote it into Camera Raw and then eventually Lightroom. And it's now known as Clarity rather than Middle Tone Contrast. Maybe some of you have access to the person who actually wrote this, but the information I've been able to gather is that it is to some degree a middle tone contrast slider, but it has some type of proprietary, almost high pass, wide radius sharpening built in. So not that super, super fine sharpening, but a wider radius to where you get a little bit more clarity in the image. That was a secret weapon as well. And people do that still in Photoshop quite a bit. Throw on a little bit of high pass here and there. Maybe they add a little bit of Orton glow, but then they don't want to lose that fine detail in certain areas. And so they throw a little bit of high pass on there, but with a wider radius. Sharpening really is ultra, ultra micro contrast. And there's basically two types. There's a deconvolution type, which is actually an unblurring does not create halos and artifacts and things like that unless you use it too strong. And then the other type is all the others like unsharp mask, smart sharpen, high pass and everything else. And that type of sharpening more or less is adding very micro contrast to edges, even to the point of micro halos that you can't see in a print and does make your image look sharper so it looks sharper. The problem is that when you add that type of thing into an image and then you make an enlargement, anything that you're starting to see at 100% viewing distance on the correct monitor, not a 4K, not a 5K monitor, not a laptop, but a below 4K, 24, 27, and especially a 30 inch display, well, it starts becoming a problem at a certain size and it starts getting worse and worse and worse. So 
Anytime you're trying to make an incredible, masterful print, you want to avoid these types of artifacts as much as possible. But middle tone contrast is so important to images, even in and of themselves, they make images look sharper, more defined, more clear, more dehazed, etc. So they improve clarity, it halos a lot less, and the color shifting has been, for the most part, eliminated. Sorry about my scratchy voice. I just woke up, haven't had my coffee. I'm about to get to work here on other people's gallery work. Now, D. Hayes came out, and one cool thing about being in the public eye is that clients will always send me emails. Hey, have you tried that new thing? So begins the major testing and research, sometimes accessing the people who actually made these things or the ones who know the people who made these things. But it's mostly in really competent testing, which is kind of hard to figure out how to do properly, that you really can find out what is going on under the hood. There actually is ways that we can test where we can tell what the proprietary thing that is going on is. Not always, but just sometimes. So when D. Hayes came out, I don't know if you all remember this, but it was relegated to the effects tab. And as soon as I started tweaking on it, I recognized exactly what it was doing. And out of my mouth said, that is going to have to be in the basic panel right next to Clarity. In fact, I think it should be above Clarity. The reason is, is D. Hayes doesn't have that wider radius sharpening artifacting built into it. And it's a more pure middle tone contrast slider. Yes, it will mess with your colors. It'll especially blow out blue like crazy. So you have to work with your colors and your saturation. And the other thing that it does is it does drive blacks or darks too dark at a certain point. But it is very close to just that pure middle tone contrast that was that secret weapon in Photoshop for a long time before we even had raw converters. And it just does not do the micro contrast at edges like texture and clarity do. So it does not enhance your noise profile, which is just basically the graininess of your image after you have eliminated color noise. And so you can get a much richer, more depth, more middle tone contrast into the image, but without creating artifacting. So I'm an advocate for dehaze at fairly high values as your preset or starting point. And then also because it has a tendency to go after middle gray and wherever that is in your image, and sometimes it won't attack all the areas you want it to attack in your image, how you want it to, it's a good idea to learn how to localize it with either the brush tool or the gradient tool or the radial tool or what have you, masking it in Photoshop as a raw smart object or as a normal 16-bit layer. So, dehaze. Oh yeah, there's that yum. But at a certain point, as you can tell, blacks are getting too black, darks are getting too dark and it is pushing colors more and more and more. By default, I have something like 35 points built into my presets, but you can tell that this is really attacking the hazy grayish areas of the image quite well. If you zoom up on the image and you look at the noise, you're gonna see that it, for the most part, does not accentuate the noise because it's not doing the micro type of sharpening. Maybe you'll see a little bit more there just because the lights got lighter and the darks got darker, but in most cases you can push it quite far without artifacting, especially in clean images. So clarity I already told you, and you can see it is attacking the grays, and you can see that they have made it like you did it on a luminosity layer 
it really does do some nice things to images, but when you zoom up on those images, you're going to see that grainy sharpening type of an effect. So I would use that sparingly or not at all if I was going to make a gigantic enlargement. If you're only doing images for display, who cares? Throw the rules right out the window. And also, if you do, maybe throw some in your sky or something like that. You can always add a little bit of luminance noise reduction to try to smooth out the accentuated noise or artifacting. But it starts making things look a little weird. Now this texture, I've been getting so many questions about this. And as soon as I slid the slider, I knew exactly what it was. This one is also relegated to the middle tones a little bit, but much more so it is a middle frequency, or I would say a high frequency to middle frequency accentuation. That type of thing, although it can make images look really good if brushed in very, very carefully, when you look at the enlargements, those areas start acquiring really nasty artifacts extremely fast. And the reason is, even though I haven't talked to the person who developed this algorithm, I've done some testing in Photoshop and it is nearly identical to a wide radius unsharp mask sharpening, and I'll show this to you. So again, if you're interested in making really awesome prints, I would try to rely on dehaze the most, maybe learn some Photoshop techniques with middle tone contrast as well. For web though, I'll tell you, the texture and clarity, yes, you can brush it into areas and it will definitely draw more attention to those areas. But if you zoom up really close, you will see nasty artifacting starting to build up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this into Photoshop just to show you what texture is really doing to an image. So here's the image, we're in Photoshop. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it a couple of times. On this one here, I'm gonna put it in luminosity mode so the colors don't change. And I'm just gonna run a unsharp mask. I'm just gonna guess on this one. It really has to do with how much megapixels you have, how wide the radius should be to try to get it to be looking just like the texture. But I'm gonna go ahead and run 60 amount and around 10 on the radius. Now here's the deal. When you really sharpen images, you never wanna go wide, wide radius like this, except for maybe just a hint of it for clouds or something like that. The wider you go radius wise, the more just contrast, but it's a unique type of contrast this is adding, but very dangerous when it comes to artifacts. So there we go. This is before, after, before, after. I'll zoom up. Before, after, before, after. I'll come back. Now, I'll turn that off. Let's go to the layer above it. Filter, camera raw filter. Let's just jack up texture all the way. Hit okay before, after, before, after, and then here is the unsharp mask. Clicking back and forth between the two, you see almost no difference. Nearly identical. Close up, before, after, before, after. Very little difference. And I probably have the radius guess not correct. So that's basically what you're doing. You're adding a wide diameter type of sharpening into your image to get more quote unquote clarity or presence or vividness in these areas. But I will tell you, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous if you are in the business of making high quality enlargements. So to summarize, clarity and dehaze in my opinion are attacking your middle frequencies more like a wide diameter unsharp mask or wide diameter high pass. They accentuate noise and artifacts considerably. Be really careful with that idea. If you're ever gonna make prints bigger than say 24 inches on up and the bigger you make prints, the more the stuff gets very ugly. I would also be aware of how high your ISO is. 
Higher ISO images attacked with this are gonna be even worse. Ultra clean images will be able to handle a little bit more. And then with clarity, is pretty much the same thing, but there is a little bit more middle tone contrast built into that, I believe. I think it's a hybrid where it's sort of like a high pass, wide diameter sharpening, but a little bit of middle tone contrast as well. Dehaze, very much like adding contrast and just fading it off your shadows and your highlights, but it does affect those shadows a little bit more. And for the very most part, safe, and clean and artifact free. All of you keep kicking tail. All the best to you. We'll see you out there.